Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com slash jamesbruton for 10% off. I love 3D printed giant Lego bricks. You should check out my giant Lego electric skateboard, which I can ride on. It does about 20 miles an hour. And also the giant Lego Hyper Reality Blaster project, which shoots virtual bullets to hit physical targets. So check those out in my channel. So I've decided I should do some more giant Lego projects because they're quite popular. But basically, what are we gonna do? Well, I quite like minifigures, so we're going to make some robotic animatronic minifigures which do various things that are really exciting. Yes, this one's going to be based off Emmett Brukowski from the Lego Movie. We've even got high vis tape to stick on him. So there we go. That's the lovely orange. Now this Lego minifig's absolutely massive. This one is seven times bigger than a normal minifig, and I think this is about ten times. It's about forty centimeters or sixteen inches tall. He still needs another arm made, but most of him's there. So this minifig's got a few special features. So we've got these hatches that come off the side of his legs here, and that allows us to put a servo into one side and a special bearing in the other side, so that we can animate his waist. Now I was going to animate the arms but I'll probably do that in another minifig so for now these are just going to be posed and stuck on as is the head but in the back of his body we've got this massive cavity with a hatch so we can put batteries and electronics in and we can make him do something very special. That's right we're going to put him on an electric skateboard and he's actually going to steer on proper trucks by leaning back and forth and that's why he's got a servo in his leg. So we're going to put brushless wheels in the hubs, which we'll come on to shortly, and an actual proper steering mechanism on each skateboard truck, just like a real skateboard. Now there was a minifig skateboard that you could buy once upon a time, not sure if they still put them in sets, but it just looks like a normal skateboard that's rather handy. The wheels are a bit oversized, so I'm going to scale those down a bit for other reasons that I'll come on to shortly. So let's talk about the motors. We're actually going to put brushless motors in the wheel hubs. So I've got these, which are Turning G Multistars. These come as a pair. I think they were reduced to £7 a pair. So I've got four of them and we're probably going to do four wheel drive. These are 28 millimetre, 460 kV motors. And we've also got the things that you would attach a propeller normally. You'd have four of them on a drone, counter rotating and uh, not counter rotating. But in fact, what I've done is printed Ninja Flex tires. So these are flexible. They've got a recess that fits the motor and we can just bolt that on. So now the outer rotates and the bit with the wire is stationary. So that gives us four wheels that are rotate and now we just need to mount those on trucks that actually steer. So let's have a look at some actual skateboard trucks. This is a normal skateboard I got from a toy shop and um, the wheels are pretty rubbish, but there we go, that's how it works. And this is a reverse kingpin uh, truck here. So on this one, you'll notice this big nut at the back is towards the middle of the board. This one, it rides to the front, but actually there's nothing really different. It's just this angle is uh, very much exaggerated and this gives you much more steering. So we can design the Lego one around this so he can actually lean not too far and he can steer quite a long way. So basically what we've got is the thing that screws onto the board and then we've got this kind of T-shape. Obviously the wheels go on here and we've got a bushing here and then we've got another bushing here. So it's basically like two uh, 45 degree angles and uh, both of them are slightly squashy basically and depending on how much you do up the nut makes it um, softer or harder to lean on. So um, this is the main pivot point of course that causes the actual wheels to rotate and this is the bit that takes most of the load when you steer. So uh, leaning side to side of course of course is those to steer then we have opposite pairs on each end of the board so they steer in opposite directions we get a nice tight turning circle. And here's my first go which was in the CAD that I just showed you so this is basically the piece that bolts on the board and this is going to be the piece that fits in there and leans and has the wheels mounted on each end. So um, the bushing is going to be quite interesting because I need them to be really soft. So for now what I'm going to do is just stick in this piece of 6mm studding in an 8mm hole. There's another 8mm hole there so that slots on there and then that uh, pointy piece fits into a recess. So uh, now it's quite loose of course when we steer this actually needs to flex in this direction side to side so this can't be too tight hence the real one is fixed into a nice bushing and then basically we're going to have some squashy material in either side probably some elastic bands holding it down so this thing can pivot. So now you should be to see if I lean this side to side it does in fact make the orange truck underneath the steer side to side 
and of course we'll have two of these on the board. So we've got these 3D printed extensions on the motors and those obviously slot into the truck and the truck has a piece of 8mm studding that goes all the way through and of course that fits into these as well to give it a bit of extra strength. So they should fit in there and go through the middle of that and that means that we're not going to snap the prints if we um, hit something or go over a jump. Hopefully that should be pretty sturdy when it's assembled. So that's one truck built and uh, yeah that seems to steer pretty well. Now it's a bit wider we can see that much more clearly. Right, so I've 3D printed the board, which is in two halves. There's a piece of 6mm studding that goes into a hole, and there's also holes for his feet, so we can run the wires down to the motors, of course. Now, we've also got two holes between those, so that we can bolt this together with a couple of 4mm bolts that should hold it pretty rigid. The plan could be as well to put some rails along the bottom for extra rigidity, which will also be conduits to take the wires. Uh, they go to the wheels on each side. So I'm going to get this assembled and get the trucks on and see if this actually leans and the wheels steer properly and everything works like a skateboard. All right, so the board's together there and um, we seem to have quite a lot of ability to steer there, which is pretty good. So we do need to sort out those bushings still to sort out making them firm enough so that the Lego man can lean and steer okay. We're not going to know how much mass he's going to shift till we put him together. So that's the next thing. And obviously we need it to stand up centrally in the middle without just the wheels falling off. So we need to do something there as well. So let's see what's inside the Lego man. So in this side we've got a servo fitted and the servo horn is screwed in here. So this should fit together like so. And I've got a hole there so I can put the screw in to actually screw the horn onto the servo. But in itself that's not a very strong joint. So this leg of course slots on here and we've got that bearing. You can just see in there an 8mm normal size skate bearing. And on this side of the leg we've got some 8mm studding glued in which goes into that bearing. And that should make a much stronger cross brace. So we're going to put all of that together and power up this servo which is a 20 kilogram digital servo and see what he can do. Right so that's fitted in. I've just connected that to the radio control transmitter. So of course this will be the steering control. So we've got quite a wide range of motion there. And it should be quite responsive. So all of this will be fitted in his body and that's what the cavity is for, so the battery is pretty hefty as well, that's going to go in, his head's pretty heavy, so that should give him enough mass to shift. And of course we need to run wires down his legs to actually control the motors in the skateboard. So I've got a couple of bungee cords that hold these trucks on and stop the wheels falling off and we've just put in two foam blocks there, we've got holes in and fit around those spiky things, so they seem to work pretty well. There's a bit of slack, but when it's going straight it should stand up like a bicycle. Right, so I've put the battery in the body there, so we've got quite a bit more mass. And hopefully that should be enough. Well, he can lean on his board anyway. But obviously in motion hopefully it makes uh, a sort of smoother, a smoother lean. And hopefully when he's in the middle, it should go along and stand upright like rolling a coin on its end or whatever. So that should make him more stable and he should be to lean just a little bit to steer. We'll never know really till we power it up and try it. So we might have to change that uh, bushing material. Right, I've just glued his head on and all the other things now. So they're fixed in position because otherwise we won't know where the mass is. I was going to make them adjustable, but there's no actual joints. Maybe in the future, maybe they could be animatronic. So uh, for now, yeah, he's uh, feeling like he's going to be able to balance and steer on that board. He can tip over if you're not careful, so you have to be a bit careful. Way, but there we go. So in motion though, that's going to be completely different because it should tend to stay upright. So at the moment, there's a bit of a dead spot, but hopefully it'll, it'll be upright when it's going along. But we'll have to see if it works really in a big open space and take lots of super glue. So let's talk about what's in his body. We've got the battery, of course, which is a 5 amp hour 12C battery. So we can get quite a few amps out of that, around 60. We've got, of course, the uh, transmitter and the radio receiver, which is one of these Fly Sky ones. And we've got the uh, battery eliminator circuit, which I'm going to use just to power that 20 kilogram servo because it's fairly hefty. We have got an ESC with a beck in as well, but it's only 2 amp. And this is 5 amp. So we don't want to brown out the ESC in the radio and stop everything from working. And we can actually use a radio control car. It's a 45 amp Hobby King X car um, brushless ESC there. And that obviously has three wires that go to um, normally one motor. And in fact, what I'm going to do is run all of the four motors of one ESC. So these motors peak at 8 amps and that's a 45 amp ESC and we can get 60 out of the battery. So that should be alright. Just need to run the wires down and make sure they all rotate in the same direction. And I've made the wheels pretty small and I commented on that when we looked at the actual minifig skateboard and that's so it doesn't go too fast and there's not too much load on the motors because there's no gearing at all. It's just that motor straight in the hub. And they're 460 kV motors which is the slowest I could find for that size motor. If it's too slow we can make the wheels bigger 
but um, actually it's going to be pretty hard to start slowly and I think it's going to wheel spin, but it should go really fast. So I've one wired my one ESC to all of four motors and uh, sometimes it runs all right and sometimes it's really rough. And if I grab one weird and load it, Oh, then it's dreadful and sometimes they spin the wrong way and that's because these ESCs use the back EMF coming off the motor coils to work out what the motor position is and try and uh, energize the phases on those brushless motors in the right order basically. But because I've got four motors connected, sometimes it gets confused. Um, so basically we're going to have to use four ESCs. Now I've tried a VESC ESC, which is a proper skateboard ESC and I thought I could um, tune the settings because there's some a configuration utility for that, but I haven't been able to sort it out. Then I thought about using just drone ESCs, but of course those don't have a center off. They go from zero all the way up because uh, drone rotors only spin in one direction. So it looks like I'm gonna have to have four car ESCs, basically if I wanna do forward and reverse. Right, here are the four ESCs. I've wired all of the power wires together, then I've spliced in the back, so that goes into the battery there. So those are all powered. All of these wires are for the brushless motors. We've combined all of the signals, but just the signal wire and the ground wire, not the five volt pin. That isn't combined to anything. Um, and that goes to one of the channels on the receiver. Then we've got that Beck is actually powering the receiver and the other wire goes off to the servo. So it's a bit of a nightmare in hindsight. I probably should have used brushed DC motors with a gear head on in each wheel. Uh, but there we go, that's what we're left with. Right, so it's a bit of a nightmare. I'm pretty sure he's got a backpack in the movie, which might be quite useful. He might be getting one of those for things that don't fit inside. But uh, there we go. Anyway, I've got his motor in there. And uh, now all of my uh, wheels work, and we've got those four car ESCs. You can hear the fans. That's what that noise is. It's all the cooling fans, because obviously they're 45 amp ESCs. So uh, now all my wheels work, forward and reverse. And if I grab one of them, the others still go, and that one tries to turn, and they don't make a nasty sound. So I've got a bit of cable management to do, but on the whole, well, hey, it seems to be working pretty well. All right, he's just about ready to go. I've got most of that wiring packed into his back. We have got a back panel that sort of clips on there, but I'm just gonna leave that open for testing so that we can get to the wiring and get to the battery, more importantly, to unplug the power if anything goes wrong. But he's all set up, he's got his high-vis tape on and all of the stuff, so he looks like Emmett from the Lego Movie. So let's give it a go. Right, it's time to test the skateboarding Lego dudes. I'm here with Tinyufel. Don't forget to check out that video we did about face scanning. It's really funny. Right, it's time to put a GoPro on him. Do it. All right. Just jammed. Is that is that helmet going to fit him though? It will be fine. Um, it yeah. looks too big. No, no, it's safety first. There we go. Perfect. Yep. Good. Are you okay? He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Yep, so that shrieking sound is the steering servo that's finally broken in his hips. So there we go, Metal Gear servo, but oh. Yep, the, the gears have broken. Good. So what's the analysis? Well, there's a number of issues there. I think that the actual board is a bit too sloppy, so we need to firm up those trucks a bit, and that causes it to snake. 
and then when we crashed the first couple of times we probably stripped some gears off that servo um, and that made it even worse because the top wasn't holding solid at all. We might have too much mass in the top, it might be worth moving the battery down into one of the legs and there's still space in one of those of course, uh, which is completely empty apart from that bearing. So uh, once it was snaking it was pretty bad. When we hung that load on the back, we hung that little helmet on the back, the crash helmet, Obviously that sort of pulled it in one direction and then it went for much longer before I crashed completely into the grass. So I'm pretty sure that the waste was too sloppy by that point because the servo is already broken and then of course we lost some more teeth off it. It can never achieve its position so it just carried on on turning there. So uh, there we go. So what we probably need is a part two now. There's some other issues as well of course which is that the wheels are all running the same speed and they're brushless motors so they're probably fighting each other on the corners and trying to push it straight again which is not helping with stability. So uh, probably what we need to do is separate out the two sides so that as we lean we actually drive one set of wheels faster and we probably don't need to lean as much then it might just sort itself out. I might make some little stabilizers either side with little wheels to stop it falling over completely and breaking once I've replaced that servo and um, there's some more detail to put on him as well and he probably needs his backpack to cover all the wires. So I think I'm going to do a part two on this but let me know if you've got any other ideas for giant animatronic lego minifigs. I've got a few more coming but let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed it and you've got any more ideas. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace can provide websites, domains and online shops. Don't forget to use the link in the description to this video to get 10% off. That's squarespace.com slash James Bruton. Alright, that's all for now.